Hello everyone, this is Elias Martin from Collecting Japanese Prints. Welcome to Woodblock Wednesday, where every Wednesday we get together and discuss Japanese woodblock prints, paintings, history, and culture. I'd like to thank all of you who um, participated in last week's Woodblock Wednesday, particularly with all of the questions uh, that um, you've submitted the comments, I really appreciate those. Uh, not just because uh, it lets me know what you're interested in discussing, uh, and also the questions also open up uh, topics of conversation that other collectors I know would be interested in learning more about. And so uh, I was inspired by those comments and I thought I would rework today's Woodblock Wednesday uh, for another, well, I was, I was, I was thinking of doing something today on Sosaku Hanga artists uh, producing florals, since last week it was Shin Hanga florals that we discussed. But I'm going to add a bit more to what we discussed last week um, in terms of Shin Hanga and Shin Hanga publishers and the type of control um, that publisher, publishers had at that time. Um, it's, you know, it seemed like everyone was interested in that particular topic. And so I thought I'd present to you a nice case study of a Hasui print produced by Watanabe. And I'm actually going to show you two. One I actually sold uh, about a year and a half ago on my website. And so I'm going to use an image from my archive, comparing it to a little later, um, another, uh, another design of the same essentially the same print, but um, you could kind of see the influence of the publisher at work. So without further ado, let's go to the table and have a look. So let, let me see if I could sort of get over the, the where the print is. Yes, so this is um, a print by Kawase Hasui. It's known as Zojoji Temple Shiba. The, the print was done in 1925, and uh, it's a stunning woodblock print. Um, and you'll notice that it's, it's one of those designs that are iconic. For those of you who are familiar with Hasui, this is a design that I'm sure you've seen on the cover of books, um, articles were written about it. You see it all the time. Um, a lot of dealers use it as cover pieces to exhibitions. And so it's a very important print. Um, and again, it's done in 1925. And today I wanted to, you know, again, touch upon our week or our conversation we had last week about Shinhanga publishers, particularly Watanabe. And Watanabe was the, the publisher really who started the movement. It was Watanabe that hired the very first group of Shinhanga artists. One of them, the, the very first one really, in, uh, is uh, a Western artist, um, Fritz Capillari. And he hired him to do a few designs. They sold really well. And so Watanabe went out and looked for other artists to produce designs for his woodblock printmaking shop. Um, originally, Watanabe was producing reproductions um actually and uh, you know he was reproduced he was producing reproductions of Hiroshige prints of hokusai prints of utamaro prints and you know right around the meiji period uh, watanabe thought well wh why not you know take the the talent that um japan has uh, of the woodblock printmakers the carvers the printers and get them to produce um, more contemporary or maybe an updated version of ukiyo-e um, that were original because ukiyo-e was pretty much reproductions at that point in time. So again, he hired Kapolari, he hired other artists, Shinsui, Hasui were two of his most successful artists. He hired Goyo um, and he hired Hiroshi Yoshida. Those are just a few um, names that may ring a bell to you guys. And so what I wanted to discuss is that when Watanabe hired these artists, um, and I'm going to direct your attention not to this print, but to another print, and I apologize for the glare, um, but I'll, I'll hold my iPad. I'm gonna 
at an angle so you could see it. This is the same design, essentially. This was done in 1922. It is uh, Zojoji, Zoz and um, this is the temple in Tokyo. And it, it basically represents a much more realistic view of the temple at this time. Uh, you know, in 1922, Japan was a bit more modern than one might imagine if you're just looking at Shinhanga prints. And in this design, the perspective is accurate. Um, it's, it's what you would see if you're walking around on the grounds of the temple. There's a, a beautiful snowfall, and, and it's quite uh, beautifully done with the, with the wood grain in the background. My apologies for not having this print in person, but I sold it about a year and a half ago, and it's an incredibly hard design to, to find. So I've only seen this design twice in 20 years. It's that rare. So, um, but anyway, in this particular design, we have a, a Western, well, a man dressed in Western clothing, and it's a Western-looking umbrella. He's wearing the gear that you would think one would wear in a snowstorm, an overcoat, um, some thick, um, you know, trousers, and uh, some shoes that would uh, protect your feet from the snow. I mean, it's what you would imagine. And it's still stunning woodblock print. Um, but again, it was done before the earthquake, and because of that, this is an early collaboration between Hasui and the publisher Watanabe. It was a time when Hasui had only done maybe about maybe four dozen woodblock print designs for him. So he had quite a few, but not enough, I suppose, for Watanabe to really um, influence the artist. And Hasui was really actually interested in this time of reproducing images that reflected Japan as one would encounter it at the time. Um, so again, this is a view of Japan, 1922, before the earthquake. And so um, just to say a few more things about the um, pre-earthquake prints, they're extraordinarily rare. And they're rare because the shop, Watanabe's shop, was destroyed by the earthquake and the ensuing fires that occurred right after. The fires are actually what ravaged most of Tokyo and destroyed quite a bit of it. And so the shop was destroyed and so all of the unsold inventory as well as the wood blocks were destroyed. So they wouldn't they weren't able to be able to produce more of the prints. So the only surviving examples of these prints um, were the ones that were sold before the earthquake. And then if you think about it, the, these prints were also probably removed or put in safe places during the, the war when most of Tokyo was destroyed by the Allied bombings. So there's a, these prints, particularly pre-earthquake designs, are very rare. And as this one goes, I also suspect that it didn't sell as well. Um, that uh, you, I see other pre-earthquake designs uh, by Hasui in the marketplace, uh, more or less um, with some regularity. And even though they were produced before the earthquake, it seems like a lot of them went into the public by you know in private hands by 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 clients purchasing them. And this print you don't see all that often. And what I suspect is I just don't think it sold as well. And I think what, what didn't help the design is maybe the perspective, but most um, importantly, the figure. It's a, it's a man dressed in a Western dress, and it, it doesn't really add uh, to the design in the sense that it, it, it does not um, pull on the heartstrings of, of people who want to see old Japan. And a lot of these prints were sold to uh, tourists and uh, other people coming into uh, Japan. And then also them, they, they were shipped away out west. And so the, the clientele was more interested in, in seeing idyllic scenes of old Japan and not scenes of maybe a Westerner um, dressed you know, in Western clothes or, or maybe a Japanese dressed in Western clothes um, walking through 
a, uh, a temple complex. That's not as striking as this design possibly. Now, in my opinion, I actually kind of like this design a bit more, partly because maybe my eye isn't attuned to the rarity of it. And this one, maybe I've seen um, more, more often than, than this design and I've just gotten used to it. So this is extraordinarily rare, but this is a, a beautiful work of art as well. However, it's different than his earlier work. And you would, one would think that if an artist is maturing and growing, that they're able to then, you know, find their voice and express themselves or produce work that's more, uh, that, that, that in some way speaks to the artist's firsthand experience. And I could assure you, the artist was less likely to see a scene like this in 1925 Japan than he would see this in 1922. And so let's look at this design a bit closer. So what we have here, the perspective, uh, this one has more of a connection to, let's say, Hiroshige than realism. Um, the perspective is not completely correct. And it's interesting sort of tree that jets out. That's uh, a, a typical, you know, Edo period, um, you know, um, tool that Hiroshige and other artists use to create kind of um, uh, a perspective, but not necessarily a perspective that was completely correct. It also adds drama to it. And, um, and th this is something um, that actually the Europeans really enjoyed when they were looking at Edo period prints by Hiroshige. Um, and, and so, but in this design, we also see the same temple at a different angle the angle's a bit more dramatic, and um, the, the snow's a bit more stylized. You see these patterns of the snow coming, coming down. And, and the, the other thing that you see here is, most noticeably, the, the woman that's crossing the temple complex. She is wearing a kimono, and the with the traditional wooden shoes, the getas, uh, wooden shoes with the socks, and the umbrella is made out of paper. Now this is very traditional, but it's it's Edo period. You know this is old Japan, and just imagine, you know, seeing a a, a snowstorm out your window like this, and then thinking, okay, well, I'm going to go outside in this kimono and these shoes and this paper umbrella and, and do my, you know, go across town and do some shopping or whatever she was doing on that particular day. Now, it could have been a holiday and I could see maybe the reason for her dress, but we don't know that. And what we do know is this scene is, it, it, it conjures up the idea of old Japan. Edo period Japan, and for those Westerners that never actually encountered it and only saw it in Japanese prints, this scene strengthens that I, those ideals and, and gives those um, clients, those customers looking for prints that depict old Japan, that very thing. And this print, um, I, I, I mean, technically, it's as, is it, hold on, flip it over. It's as beautiful, in my opinion, as the other one, but it it does not speak to that the beauty of old Japan in the way that this design does. And you know, to to really speak about the publisher here, this I believe was much more of a Watanabe inspired design. I say this because. I look at Hasui's work as well as other artists that work for Watanabe and we see similar things. We see that their early work had a little bit more of a sense of an ex exploration and subjects or themes and, and then the artist got caught in a particular sort of motif that they produced over and over again and that's because those prints sold. And obviously this print would sell quite well because it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. I mean, it, the, the way that it's produced, the, the printing, all of it, this is the height of Shinhanga, uh, in a sense that the, the, the printers, the woodblock carvers, everyone working together is producing something that is just 
utterly beautiful. But what, what's interesting as well is that the, the artist at this point in time was, though was producing amazing artwork, the influence of the publisher is felt. And in, in a, lot of, um, a lot of collectors and connoisseurs of Shinhanga may not realize the, the strong influence uh, Watanabe had on his artists. And that's not to say that's, a, that's not to their detriment. I think, in, 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 if anything, the publisher, Watanabe, was adding to the, to the strength of the, of the group of artisans working together. It was the, the publisher who had a vision, obviously it was his money, um, and, and was putting together the best qualified um, artists and artisans to produce a design with his vision. And I think also at the end of the day, Hasui really understood what Watanabe wanted to do. And then Hasui found his own voice within that paradigm. And that's not to say that um, Watanabe rejected many of his designs, but I have personally seen several watercolors that were produced by Hasui uh, that were preliminary works for prints. And, uh, and then I've seen the finished prints and you see you know, in his watercolor, you would see a telephone pole or some other scenes of, or elements of modernity. And, and on the finished print, there's no telephone pole. There, there's, there's, no, there's no other like street lights uh, that you would see, electrical street lights um, at the time. All of that is gone um, from the original Hasui designs. And I, I, I know a few collectors who are really interested in finding those original watercolors and comparing them to the, the finished prints. And what's also, you know, even further fascinating in this whole, you know, print watercolor um, connection is there are watercolors that were done later. And those watercolors look exactly like the prints. And I believe I mentioned that last time. So if you come across a Hasui watercolor, you want to pay attention to the type of paper. If the paper is very thin, almost tissue-like, and the seal is, looks like this Hasui seal, then that is an early um, preliminary sketch or finished watercolor for, uh, in preparation for a, a woodblock print. If it's on thicker paper and it's a square seal, and, and, and the square seal is not a, a rule. It's just, uh, it's what I've seen more, um, what's more common. But I'm sure there are Hasui uh, later watercolors produced after the wood black print with the, the Hasui seal. But by and large, those are square seals. And so I just wanted to point that out and show these two prints um, side by side um, and to add context to... Um, how these Shinhanga prints were produced. Um, so let me just stop talking for a moment and I just want to zoom in and you could look at how beautifully done this print is. Now, as you're looking at this image, what's uh, fantastic is you'll see the Bokashi. Uh, there's this beautiful blue that's been added to the to the snow on the roof. And there we see elements of gray and blue here. It amplifies the, the, the snow and the design. It, it gives it a much more sense of drama. This red is very rich. Um, in how it's printed. There's a lighter red here and a darker red as you get into the shadow of underneath the, the rooftop. And the, this particular print will be up on my website for sale. Uh, it's a, a very important design, as I mentioned. But in this case, this impression is really great. I wanna sh point out something that you don't often see. And this impression it's so razor sharp that you even see the embossing. Uh, there's this like sort of circular motif around the umbrella and that's printed with an embossing technique. It's blind printing. 
and on, on later prints, because this print was so popular, you do not see on later impressions this line because the blocks uh, had worn down. And on, on a little later um, impressions, what you also don't see is this dramatic um, Bokashi where it's white from the snow and then you get the, the, the brown, the light brown from the tree bark. You also see the circles of the snowflakes that go in from really light to the dark. That's beautifully done on this print. And you don't see that as well on, on impressions that are a bit lighter. This is a nice early impression. Now, just to mention a few other things for those of you who are interested in, in Watanabe and then Shinhanga and artists working in this collaborative process. Goyo, um, who was a woodblock print artist that produced beauties, 20th century beauties, as well as Hiroshi Yoshida. Both of those artists were first, I, I, I hate to describe them as being discovered, discovered by Watanabe, but he hired them really early on in their career. They were primarily painters when, when, he, when he hired them, and they did oil and watercolors, and he hired them to produce some prints, and both of them, well, Goyo produced one design, and he was not very happy with Watanabe. He didn't like the flatness of his, of his design. He thought that his, his carvers and printers did not accurately produce the, the work that he wanted to produce, so he walked away from the project. Um, I've heard from you know, some scholars that he, he actually took half the share of the prints, destroyed his half, and walked out. And so the only Goyo uh, Watanabe published prints that, that are in circulation, um, and they're all pre-earthquake, are the ones that Watanabe sold from his share. And I believe that was there was 100 impressions done. So Watanabe may have only had 50, and he probably sold a few handfuls, you know, maybe, of, the, of that design, and then the rest were, were destroyed by the fire. So that design is incredibly rare. And the same thing happened with Hiroshi Yoshida. Yoshida produced maybe six or so designs for Watanabe, and he was not very happy with Watanabe's hands-on approach. I mean, this is well known. Uh, the Yoshida family has um, you mentioned this in a few places, but uh, the point is Yoshida, Hiroshi Yoshida was much more independent. He had his own vision of what he wanted to do, and so he left um, uh, that partnership with Watanabe and started his own studio. Both of those artists went on to produce self-driven uh, work. And so that's an example that directly connects to Watanabe's very um, hands-on approach in printmaking. And possibly his, his you know, I, I mean, I, I see this. I see this in Hasui's work, Shinsui's work, and, and a few others. But the point is, uh, you know, Watanabe needs to receive some, uh, a lot more credit, I believe, than than he has because he's able to, you know, really create wonderful works of art through partnerships with artists, his expert um, master woodblock carvers and printers. So, you know, I just wanted to fill the gaps in from last week's conversation. And again, I'm going to zoom in so you can see the print. Now, it makes no sense to zoom in on here because my, my uh, iPad is with the glass. You're not really going to be able to see it. But if you want to see this, this print, go to my website, collectingjapaneseprints.com. Scroll all the way to the bottom on the black. There's a little section that says archive. Just click on the word archive and you'll see the, all the prints I've sold in the last year, year and a half. And this is one of them. And um, you, so you'll be able to examine this a little bit more closely. I have high resolution scans on all of my images on my website. You just need to double click the image once you're in the entry and it blows up to the size of the screen. So I wanna thank uh, all of you for joining me 
um, with our discussion today on Watanabe and uh, his contribution to Shinhanga. And, uh, you know, and let me know if uh, there are any other further questions about this. Um, I find it fascinating uh, because it, I, I don't know if there aren't that many examples in printmaking history when the publisher started the movement and then because he had such a strong vision for what he wanted to see for the movement that he directed his artists to sort of uh, achieve those effects. Uh, and, and of course, he had an eye because he became very successful. Watanabe, you know, basically made the careers of Hasui, Shinsui, and, and several others. So, you know, you can't, you know, you can't argue with him on, on, on that ground. Um, so anyway, if you have any questions, feel free to, to comment on the video below or direct message me and I'm happy to address any questions. And next week we'll pick up the theme of florals since we'll still be in May. And I'll uh, select a nice group of floral prints by Sosaku Hanga artists who produce work in a very different way than uh, Shinhanga artists. They actually carved and printed their own work. So we'll talk about that next week. So uh, thanks for joining me on Woodblock Wednesday, and I'll see you next week. Thanks a lot. Bye.